after releasing our differential line growth tutorial, you guys just went crazy. We received so many links to artworks, so many nice videos. And what you guys already found out is that the differential growth algorithm does not only work on a line, but also on a mesh. One particularly nice example is this one here by Olivier Janel. And the way this works is rather similar to the differential line growth algorithm. However, it has some quirks. So let's dive into Houdini and build this thing. I'm just going to start out with a torus as my base geometry, set its orientation to the Z axis, then decrease its radius a bit and increase the subdivisions. So we get a nicely subdivided ring. Also, I'd like to add normals to it in our case point normals, wire that up here. So we have now nice normals pointing outwards. The next thing I need to add to the points is an attribute called, in our case, P scale that drives how far I will relax those points later. So let's just create an attribute called P scale here, make sure it's set to float. And for now, I want to leave that attribute to zero. That is because I'd like to create another geometry, in our case, just a simple point here, which I'm just gonna move upward a bit, like that. And on that point, by the way, yeah, we'll make sure we have the both set to point here. On that point, I'm gonna create a p-scale attribute as well, which I'm gonna set to, let's say, point one. Because what I wanna do in the end is, with this point here, drive where the growth is happening on that base mesh. So I'm going to do that by creating a solver, piping in both streams, diving into the solver. And within the solver, the first thing that I want to do is on that base mesh coming in there, I want to scatter points uniformly. I want to have a mesh which has uniform point distance. And a node giving me that is the remesher node. Remember, this is what we did with the resample node in the differential line growth example. So I'm gonna use the remesh to do that. Set its target edge length to 0.03 for now, and its iterations to one. After I've done that, let's just go in here. After I've done that, I would like to tell the points which way to grow and which direction to grow. And I'm gonna do that by abusing the normal attribute of the points like those outwards here. I'm gonna use a normal to tell the points which direction to grow. Um, however, just growing uniformly outwards is kind of a bit boring. So I'm gonna add a point bob in which I will have a noise drive the direction of the normals. So let's just highlight this, dive in here. And what I'd like to do that is drop down a unified noise, wire that up to the position here set his noise type to Perlin, worked well for me, and make sure that the signature is set to 3D input 3D noise, which means we have a 3D position coming in and a three-dimensional vector coming out because when I want to drive my normal, I need a vector in the end. Another thing I want to make sure is down here, for now, all my values coming out here will range from zero to one, which would mean that my normals would always point into just one direction, into one hemisphere of the whole 3D space. I don't want that. I want them to point in the whole sphere of the 3D space, um, which I'm going to make sure by checking output range and set the new minimum to minus one for each component. So now in the end, my output will range from minus one to one instead from zero to one. One last thing before I pipe this noise vector into my normal is I need to normalize it actually to make sure it's got a length of one. I'm gonna do that with the normal node. Pipe it out here. And now we can see we've got those beautifully distorted normals here. Maybe increase the frequency just a tiny bit here so my noise gets a little more interesting. Okay, after that, now it's time to transfer the p-scale attribute. Remember, the base mesh has a p-scale attribute of zero, so all those points won't move in the end. However, I have my initial point coming in through this input here, so I'm gonna use the attribute transfer to transfer the p-scale attribute from this input onto the points here. And I'm just gonna tell it to transfer that p-scale attribute here and go to the conditions tab. 
And what attribute transfer actually does is it kind of projects attributes from one point to other points that are close by. And the way I can steer this behavior is with the conditions tab and the kernel functions here. So when I decrease the kernel radius, the radius of my projection from this point to this point is decreased. Same goes with distance th threshold, we just add the sample count and we will add a blend width so it'll blur out, the values will blur out and not abruptly end. Something like that. So what I'm doing now is from this point projecting values onto those points and fading them out over. This works really like a kernel in image processing, so like a blurring kernel, for example. The next thing I'm gonna do is finally drop down a relax node. So now we're taking care of the points actually being moved around. And we can see here, we already transferred those p scale attributes on here. And let's just dial down the maximum iterations to one. And also we can leave the other settings as they are because we take, we've take we taken care of setting the normals accordingly and setting the point scale, the p-scale value accordingly. The last thing I'd like to do in the solver is actually smooth out the results because sometimes we get those edges a bit and I'd like to smooth them. However, I'd like to smooth only those points that actually had been moved. Otherwise, I'm going to degrade the rest of the mesh. And I'm going to do that by dropping down a group node first. And in the group node, group points, and say group by expression. And I can tell it to put only points in that group that have a p scale value bigger than, say, something very small, like that. And only those points with the p scale value greater than this value are going to get smoothed by the following smooth stop that I'm going to drop down. Let's set the smoothing iterations to eight and the group to group one, the one that we just created. What's it say? Group one is not a valid name. Why not? It needs a primitive group and not a point group like that. Okay, let's head out again and hit play. Let's just save it for now there are some things that annoy me. For example, these shading errors here, they result from my abuse of the normal vector to actually drive the direction of the growth. And they are regarded in shading as well, resulting in these errors. So what I have to do here is just, again, drop down a normal sop, set it to point, wire it up, highlight it, and my normals are fixed now. Another thing that's bugging me a bit are those jagged edges here. And I can get rid of them by, again, finally smoothing one more time. Not too much, but yeah, they get a bit better. And now what I can do is play with the values of the simulation. However, as you guys pointed out, you don't really like diving in and out of the solver. And to be frank, it annoys me a bit as well. So what I usually do once I have my basic setup, my basic simulation setup done, and I know what's left to do for me is find the proper simulation values is, I create user interface elements, in this case on the solver node. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the symbol here, going to edit parameter interface. And Houdini provides me with this nice dialog that lets me customize my user interface. And in our case, there are several values which I'd like to tweak on this level. Uh, the first one is the noise frequency, so the noise scale, and I'm going to use a float slider to do that. So I'm going to drag this float over here. And Houdini needs a name and a label for each slider. The name is the variable that Houdini internally uses. So for example, in this case, noise frequency, and let's label it in a readable format. Hit apply and we see we just created this slider here. And um, with this I can give it a range and yeah, let's say the frequency from 0 to 10, that's okay. Let's just hit apply one more time. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the um, point distance of the measure. So I'm gonna drag a float over here mesh point distance and maybe limit this range from 0 to 1 in our case. I'm also going to need an integer and I'm going to use that to drive my remeshing iterations.
and let's also set this from 0 to 10, hit apply. And also what I want to do here is just add my standard values here. Next thing I want to provide is a slider for the relaxation iterations. Set that to 2. Then I need a float for the relaxation radius, so basically for my p-scale value that I set here. And um, I like to label it with the name of the parameter in the algorithm because I know what it does. Um, if you're building a setup for someone else to use, make sure you name those sliders understandable so the other person gets what you actually mean with it. But in our case, let's just call this p-scale. And yeah, let's give it a range from 0 to 1 as well. And in our case, let's set it to 0 0.025. Also, I need another integer for the smoothing iterations. Set that to 8. And two last parameters, which I want to use to influence the behavior of the attribute transfer. So in which area and in which radius the initial point coming in here influences the other points. And I'm going to use two floats for that. Call one transfer radius. Set that from 0 to 2. And another float, which we're going to used to drive the um, blur amount of the attribute transfer. Okie doke. So now I have all those sliders set up. Let's just link them to the according parts in our setup. And let's start with the P scale, because that's an easy one. Let's right click in that field and say copy parameter. And in here where we define our P scale, let's just highlight that, delete it, right click in that field and say paste copied relative references. And now the slider value in here automatically gets transferred into this field. And that's the whole magic. Let's do the same thing for the noise frequency, right click copy parameter and dive into the solver. And the noise frequency is used in the point bob, so let's dive in there as well. And in the unified noise in here, let's just delete that, right click and say paste copied relative references. And with command A and command C, I can just copy this string here and paste it in here and here and also in the last field, like that. The meshing distance, let's copy that as well, is used in our solver in the remesh node here in the target edge length. Let's paste it here as well. The remeshing iterations, let's copy those as well. I used here the relaxation iterations I used down here P scale we already set that up smoothing iterations set up down here and the attrib transfer radius and attrib transfer blur those are being used in here what they are is the distance threshold and the blend width. So 0.1 and 0.3. Just set it up here. Like that. Copy that parameter. Paste it there. Same thing with this here. And that happens sometimes when you're working with uh, pasting relative references just delete those numbers that we don't need here. Okay, let's see if the setup still runs. Yeah, still running smoothly. So let's just save that. And let's try tweaking some parameters. For example, let's increase the noise frequency to 8. Okay, and we, we can see other structures evolving. Or maybe dial down the smoothing iterations. Okay, but that works. So again, let's just step through the setup that we just built. So you have an idea what we're actually doing here. First thing, we're just going to create a base mesh. Then we added normals to it, to the points so that we just have a vector to work with. 
and created a p-scale attribute, so how far a point should be pushed apart from the other points. On the other input stream, we added a single point. On that point, we set up a p-scale value, p-scale value which defines how far the points get pushed apart, because in here we set the base mesh p-scale to zero, so points don't move. And in here, we project attributes onto that base mesh by an attribute transfer node. And in the solver, the first thing we do is make sure we have a mesh with a uniform point distance using the remesh node. Then in the point bob, assign each point normal a noise value, a vector, so that drives the direction of the growth. Then we have the attrib transfer, transferring from our initial seed point that we have in the one stream, the p-scale attributes on the other points and also blurring them out, blending them. After that, we are pushing those points apart, which have a p-scale value different than zero. And in the last step, we smooth out the points that we just pushed apart, and in order to smooth out only those points, we need to group them. And that is it. That is a differential mesh growth. So I hope you're having fun with this. Um, I hope you guys come up with uh, many renderings, many artworks and share them. I must say I'm amazed by the stuff that you share. It uh, motivates us, it motivates me and it motivates us every time we see it. We're so happy when we see tweets where you guys put out new artwork, uh, when you send us links. Please keep doing that. We really enjoy it. I hope you had fun with this and it's cheers and goodbye.